got some uh, more brassicas to put in. There's six, maybe seven here of uh, Savoy cabbage. And on here is another crop of Calabrese broccoli, which you may remember got blown away. I'm going to be planting the Calabrese in first. Now I'm under no illusion that this is going to produce anything of huge crops or anything, but anything is better than nothing after the previous install. Um, usual rules, plant into a fairly decent depth with a, a lime covering and uh, about, about a dozen plants to go in. That's the calabrese planted in there. I've sprinkled a bit of lime around the base and all. I will give them a watering in with a diluted lime wash a bit later on, but next, let's get on with planting the savoy cabbage. So I'm moving on to the savoys. Because there's a, an other winter variety and they'll be in the bed quite a long time, I've decided to plant them right at the end of the bed, across this length there. And then, come during the winter, if I wish to top dress or cover the beds, it doesn't actually disrupt this crop, we can just leave this bit uncovered. So that's it all planted up now. The calabrese are in and out of the other side. We've got the uh, savoy cabbage. Notice in here, you've got a red cabbage. If you saw the previous plot tour that I did, uh, this was actually in the tub up with it amongst the um, cabbages so I've decided to put that out into misery and put it into the bed. Midway through August and the weather has shown a mixed bag. We've had plenty of rain and also sunshine. However, there's still plenty of jobs to consider. So here we go. Early sweet corn varieties will be ripening now. And as the tassels turn brown, just peel back the outer sheaths and check that the kernels are plump and yellow. Give them a little squeeze and a milky sap should appear. Runner beans are in full swing now, but they will only continue to produce new pods if the mature ones are removed. So keep picking them and also remember to pinch out the top of the tips. rapidly growing fetch such as salad leaves, lettuce, rocket can quickly run to seed and bolt in hot dry weather so keep it well watered and pick it regularly. Leeks should be well settled in now and starting to get established. Make sure that they don't have to compete against weeds so hoe around them regularly. Start lifting onions as the foliage collapses and lays over. Store them in a drying rack to allow a good airflow, but keep them dry. Second early and main crop potatoes will be ready for harvesting, depending on the time of sowing. A good indicator is when the tops start lying down. Once you lift them and dry them, bag the tubers in paper sacks before they turn green and are inedible. Store them in a cool, dark, dry place. A shed is ideal. Now is a good time to think about propagating strawberries and there's no easier way than potting up the runners. Cut off any that you do not plan to use since it will sap the energy from the parent plant. Christmas may see a long time away but now is still a good time to consider planting up a few potatoes ready for harvest for the dinner table. Choose a second early variety such as Charlotte, Maris Pier or Casablanca. Plant them in containers so that they can be moved under cover as the weather turns cooler. Well it's been quite a busy weekend. Friday and Saturday saw the annual Shrewsbury Flower Show. I attended on the Friday. I didn't film as I usually do because a number of reasons. Mainly I wasn't able to plan the day out ahead. But uh, the other reason was the weather wasn't too kind. We did have a few sunny spells, but we also had some torrential downpours. I hope you enjoy it.
lovely gather from that. That was quite an entertaining day. Very long, but really enjoyed it. The following morning, I was nipping across over to Birmingham to see our friend Dave Taylor. And again, unfortunately, the weather got the best of us. But I'll let Dave tell you what happened. Right, for the regular viewers out here, you'll recognise this gentleman here by the side of me, Dave Taylor. Yeah. Now I'm down on his uh, site because today was planned for the uh, the allotment fate, and, but unfortunately the weather has beat us. So um, over to Dave, well, what is, uh, you've decided to call it off today every day. Yeah, let me just get going and I'll be with you. Yeah, um, we were planning to have a, a, a summer fight that would stagger humanity today. Um, masses of stores and activities. Catherine Jenkins was going to open it with a few arias. Rod Stewart was jetting in. Uh, Pink. We get loads of uh, things going on. But sadly, um, we started putting the stores up. And the last one was seen going over Dogger Bank about 10.30. <laughs> so I'm particularly disappointed because I'd hope to, um, I'd hope to amaze um, the, 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 the ladies with the size of my cucumbers. Uh, but that, that can't happen now. But, uh, no, it really has. Seriously, it's been dreadful. Gales and all sorts. Lost those and we, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, carry on because the health and safety is just too damn dangerous. But the good news is, We've, we've rescheduled it for Saturday the 24th of this month and if um, God willing, if the weather's half decent, we'll have a jolly good show. Anybody so, who wants to come along would be more than welcome. So you've heard it direct from the horse's mouth, or say Dave's mouth in this case. Uh, 24th, if you're around the Birmingham area, come and say hello, we'll both be here. Come and have a look at our ducks. Got 12 buckets of uh, charlotte potatoes here, second earliest. They should have been turned out quite a long while ago, but I haven't got round to it. What I'm going to do is just remove the foliage off the top, leave them in, and just turn them as I require them. But I will show you the first bucket that I'm going to upheave. So these have been in the ground far longer than they should have been, and I expect what is ever there to be bigger than normal, which really don't like for Charlotte's because they are my favourite potato. We'll have a look what's inside. Now let's see, all out of the Charlotte potatoes, I was really expecting a bit more than that. Uh, I'll have a look what's in uh, the other buckets when I do, but in the meantime I'll weigh these and I'll put it on the screen. That's all the foliage removed off the uh, Charlotte potatoes in the tubs. I think I said I've got 12 buckets, it's actually 20, it's 5 rows by 4. Uh, just show it here, that you might recall that I did uh, line the edges of the buckets with horse manure. Already that started rotting and uh, come the spring that's going to turn in really nice. We have got blight on the site and I noticed that one of the guys farther up the plateau who uh, sometimes water a few of his plants for him, he's uh, actually took a few of his tomatoes out and I've had a look and they have got blight spores on so uh, this will be a good test for the tomato trial that I'm doing outside with the three varieties. Depending on the speed that we eat these if they're not disappearing too quickly, I will actually empty all the buckets and store them in a paper sack into the shed. And can you believe it? It's still raining. We've had four or five hours of heavy rain this morning. The allotment's already flooded and no doubt warm weather again, the blight will be back. That's about it for this one. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to close it on a sad note. I said farewell to a great companion and friend a few days ago. He spent a lot of time on the allotment with me, not always on camera, but he, he mousied around to the other plot holders and they all knew him. 
Um, he loved Christmas Day, especially opening his present. See ya.